Great. Welcome everyone to our October EP committee meeting. Um, when Winnie and I were planning out programs for this year, we really wanted to dive deeper into Fairfax County and the different groups and offices and kind of what they're doing, how they operate, um, how we can get involved to provide public comment throughout the year. Um, and we immediately thought about the Park Authority and you, Tim. Um, so invited Tim to speak to us a bit more about the board, um, how it relates to the Park Authority, what's going on there, how we can get engaged, what we should be aware of. Um, and so Tim has prepared, his team has prepared um, some slides to share with us and some topics to discuss tonight. So I'll pass it to you, Tim. Okay, thank you, Lisa. It's good to see everybody. Uh, I did say, I did tell Lisa that I'd also, in addition to her recording this uh, presentation, be happy to send her uh the 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 presentations uh, uh after uh, uh after the event tonight uh so um uh, by way of background you're you're all uh, well versed in in parks and fairfax county uh park authority so i i'm going to just skip over these front things you can see the um uh, the uh, um the economic drivers the racial equity the uh, wellness the uh diversity the um, uh, 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 the ubiquity of our parks, et cetera, et cetera. But I wanted to focus just quickly on uh, the park authorities, um, uh, county authority, the charter under which, or the MOU under which we operate. Uh, that was most recently renewed in August. There was a lot of discussion at that uh, point in time. I think we were dealing with... Uh, um, uh, Justice High School and and the school board wanting to take part of our uh, uh, park there to expand the uh, the high school and and people were uh, uh, upset with uh, that situation. So in this MOU that was uh, uh, renewed in August 2021, there it was I think a 30 year charter, but there's a five year review period that comes up uh, in another two years. Uh, don't know what's going to happen. There have been discussions uh, at the Board of Supervisors that, um, gee, could we could we exert more influence on the Park Authority and what it does if it was de a department and not a separate authority? If it was a department, obviously it would report directly into uh, um, uh, the uh, county uh, uh, county uh, manager, the county executive, uh, but. Um, uh, and we would go away as a board, which uh, that is we, the Park Authority Board, would go away as a board with any direct influence, although there may still be an advisory board should that happen. Anyway, who knows what's going to happen with that. Uh, I just wanted to highlight that as a potential, uh, uh, a potential issue. So this is the scope of, of the Park Authority. You're well-versed with this, 40, 420 parks, 23,000 acres, nine, nine uh, rec centers. The, the parks include um, uh, ball courts and, and athletic fields, uh, um, uh, you know, tennis courts, pickleball courts, uh, you, you, you name it, 320 miles of trails. Uh, lots and lots of facilities and area to have to maintain. So the board itself is comprised of, uh, of 12 members, nine members representing one from each of the uh, magisterial districts and three at large members. Uh, the, uh, we um, set policy. We're not supposed to be involved in operations. Obviously, uh, citizens and the supervisors come to us for operational issues. And, uh, um, and, uh, and so by, by definition, uh, we get involved in that. Um, and but uh, theoretically, we are just supposed to uh, set uh, set policy. Uh, some of the key decisions: land acquisition, park development, park revenue, and operating fund, and park bond. Uh, we uh, do not get to determine how large the taxpayer-supported portion of our operating and capital expenses are uh, in terms of the uh, uh, the amount of the park bond or the amount of the the taxpayer-funded general fund. So we, we, we do have a number of committees. These are all standing committees. And as of about uh, within the last two years, we used to have um, a, a select member of uh, people or board members on each committee. Now these are all committees of the whole. So 
um, when we have uh, discussions and the committee meetings generally precede the board meetings at our regular meetings. Our meetings are usually held on the second and fourth Wednesdays of the of the month. There may be out of cycle meetings from uh, from time to time and off and usually we take a, an August recess. But in terms of the committees, uh, they're now committees of the whole. So all the members can raise points, ask questions, be involved in the discussions at each of the uh, committees, with the exception of the executive committee. The executive committee is still just the uh, uh, officers of the uh, Park Authority Board. That would be uh, Kyle Stone, Chairman, Maggie Godbold, uh, Vice Chair, uh, Cynthia Jacobs, Dr. Dr. Cynthia Jacobs Carter, Secretary, and myself as, uh, as Treasurer. Uh, but uh, the other thing about these is that, for example, we have a, a, um, uh, a an outreach, a community communications and committee engagement committee meeting Wednesday, this coming Wednesday night, which is a virtual meeting. Uh, and that's to discuss the outreach on our equity plans. Mm -hmm. And I'll talk more about that later. Uh, likewise, we have a, a um, presentation to the resource management committee with the uh, the natural resource management plan uh, accomplishments for the prior year and plan for the next uh, the next year. Similarly, um, uh, planning uh, planning and development committee has a meeting has a uh, uh, committee meeting this Wednesday. We will get our quarterly update from the planning committee in terms of each of the projects across the whole park authority that is underway and what the status of those are. We, we get, um, uh, as I said, that update quarterly. That's a document you can get online. It is included within the park committee package for that meeting. Uh, and it's a very okay. handy thing to have. We, we also have um, from, from the planning group, an annual work plan. And that's really important because that says, you know, what are we going to spend our time on in terms of planning and development for the next uh, next fiscal year? And if it's not there, it shouldn't get worked on. Now things get slotted in after you know, from time to time, but uh, generally that's the case. So here's our executive team: Jay Cole, executive director from from about two years now; Sarah Baldwin, who has the operational side; and and Amy Voss, for whom you might know from her. Uh, uh, discussions with the Grange uh, as the uh, business development side. And this is the current uh, uh, organizational chart of the, uh, uh, of the senior uh, staff and, and the divisions. So again, park services is rec centers, park operations is maintenance, business administration is finance, resource management, that's sort of the general fund, non-revenue side, the historic sites and nature centers. And then uh, uh, all the planning side and communications is under uh, Amy Vosper on the right. So in priorities, you, you asked that I cover some current initiatives. Uh, one, fair facts and equity, trying to make uh, the park system more equi equitable in terms of the, uh, the programs, the facilities that are available to all and access to all. Um, uh, financial uh, sustainability in terms of this year's budget, uh, the uh, deferred maintenance, which is a been a big issue. Board of Supervisors actually was helping us to, to catch up on that uh, uh, that uh, last year, last fiscal year. We'll, we'll see if we have to take a step back. I'll show you that in the budget discussion. We just completed a study about a year ago called uh, um, Parks, Recs, uh, Open Space and Access uh, to try to improve the accessibility to our, uh, to our parks. And then, of course, um, uh, November 2026, we have our next uh, park bond, which moved a few years ago from a four-year to a six-year cycle. So racial and social equity in parks is a big issue in, among the board these days. Uh, we're trying to uh, fill in the gaps where, uh, where services or facilities uh, don't, don't exist. And so that's going to, uh, you'll see in the, late, in the next few charts, inform a lot of our future decisions in terms of, uh, uh, in, in terms of funding. You'll note here that apart from the town of Herndon, there are not a lot of quote opportunity areas in the Drainsville, uh, uh, Drainsville district. So PROSA really says, okay, uh, uh, um, we ought to have, each citizen ought to be within a 10 minute walk to a park. That's not a, uh, a standard we pulled out of the air that's a national standard. Um, 
Uh, and then we're trying to figure out also where we can uh, improve connectivity between adjacent uh, uh, parks in terms of environmental quarters, uh, quarters and things of that nature. So here's uh, uh, another map which sort of shows, okay, let's, let's take the PROSA study and let's take the um, uh, capital improvement program, uh, which, which says this is the bond money we have available and where should we be spending our money in the, uh, in the future? And so this is a chart which might show some of uh, uh, those opportunity areas. Uh, now, moving on a little bit to, uh, to funding and, and, uh, and the budget, the, uh, we originally were funded by a general fund, taxpayer supported. Then Audrey Moore was built and uh, the Board of Supervisors said, you need to cover the uh, the Audrey Moore operating costs uh, with with fees and charges. We're not going to pay for that. Well, that was the start of the revenue side of our funding model of our budget, and and now you can see it covers all the rec centers, the golf courses, programs, um, uh, you know, summer camps, uh, the pools, and things like that. So it's a it's a huge. It is now, as I recall, sixty six percent of our overall budget versus 34% is the general uh, general fund. Uh, and, uh, and, you know, keeping that revenue fund solvent, which we have to do uh, by law is, is the basis for all, all decision-making. I will say, well, I can talk about that later. Okay, so, so this is the county budget. This is, this shows that, you know, we get less than 1%, the general fund that is, just the general fund, less than 1% of the county's overall budget. This is not the only source of county funding. I'm gonna show you uh, some other, uh, uh, other pots we have. But what is the general fund composition? Uh, most of it's personnel, as you might expect. Uh, and um, th there is some uh, operational and maintenance expense in there. Uh, so, for example, uh, nature centers or other things which can't fund themselves are are uh, um, are covered by the general fund. On the other hand, the revenue fund that's everything that has a uh, um, you know has a fee. The summer programs, the rec centers, the, the golf, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so, here are some of the other funding buckets: park improvement fund. That generally is uh, the money, and you'll see how much that is, the money we have left over at the end of a year in the revenue fund, the, the net between uh, our revenue and our expenses on the, rev on, on the fee side. Um, general construction and contributions is usually carryover money from taxpayer money from, from the county. County does fund some of our benefits. Uh, the environmental folks, uh, fund some things for us like solar panels or geothermal at, uh, at Spring Hill and other, other locations. And then the big park bond, the every six year thing, that's a, a big tranche of our, our funding. So how has that general fund operating fund, the taxpayer fund changed uh, over the last 13 fiscal years? Uh, you can see it's a $9 million change or increase, but most of that was staff salaries. Uh, the rest is uh, is um, meaningful, but in relatively small amounts. Uh, this is where we are in the, in the budget cycle. Uh, Park Board just approved our general fund uh, submission package, and um, and I'll show you what we also had to put in in terms of a non recommended or non endorsed. Um, a reduction package that was requested by the county executive. So obviously the um, uh, the county executive releases his plan and in February it's marked up, adopted in uh, in uh, April or May uh, and then um, uh, and then put into place July 1st. So we are in the operating in the FY 2025 fiscal year, the budget we're talking about here is for the FY 2026 fiscal year. So there was guidance um, in uh, the um, 
FY25 budget that went into effect July 1st that we, uh, um, I, I'm sorry, this is the one which, which the, that the uh, county executive issued, which says, you know, um, fill positions, reduce uh, inefficiencies, get rid of vacancies, and provide me with a proposed 10% reduction in your um, general fund funding based upon the roughly FY 2024 um, actual, actual budget that just ended June 30th. So our target with that is um, about three and a half million dollars based upon our $35 million or so uh, FY 2024 general fund budget. We did have such a, an exercise last year uh, uh, that was a seven and a half percent uh, uh, proposed reduction. Personnel headcuts were off the table and you can see why that really put us in a bind. Uh, uh, but none of those reductions were taken last year. Uh, this year, we don't know. We don't know what the situation is going to be. And personnel reductions were not off the table this year. Um, so uh, if you remember back at that chart, you know, the personnel was, uh, uh, was what? The, 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 the non-personnel was like 7 million of the 35 million. So you take three and a half million out of $7 million without cutting personnel and you almost have nothing uh, left operationally or only half of what you had operationally in the, in the general fund. So these are the re reductions that we have put on the table uh, at the county executive request. Our board did not endorse them, but we were required to put those forth. Um, there are some, some uh, drastic things here. For example, uh, reducing the athletic mowing is, is going to be tough because it may make the fields unplayable. Reducing the Port of Johns is not, uh, recleaning is not, because that just takes us back to our pre-COVID standard of, I think, twice a week versus three times a week. Um, but down there, closing one nature center and one historic center, which are staffed centers, uh, that's a big ticket item. Uh, and that would have uh, uh, clearly have an impact. So that's the list. I'm not going to go through that further. Uh, here's the general fund development. So so this is the budget guidance that was in the uh, from the Board of Supervisors in the FY25 uh, budget that was adopted. And, and it was to, to work with county staff to develop an equitable funding model and to determine if there are uh, alternate approaches that would help to uh, further uh, address uh, and move forward equity. And, um, and may need to be that uh, those changes may need to be implemented over multiple years. Uh, in terms of the base FY26 um, budget request, these are the only uh, new funding requests that were permitted above the baseline, which were new facilities, uh, contract increases, or criti critical county operations. Now, um, this shows our uh, budget for uh, general fund budget historically for, as I said, 35 million roughly for FY24. It's going up this year uh, somewhat. And the baseline forecast would start from this year's budget with the increase with only the increases that we have uh, uh, mentioned. So there are two increases. Uh, one is to the uh, Last year, you can see at the bottom for the current fiscal year, the Board of Supervisors did give us some money to comply <laughs> with the Fairfax, yes, uh, Fairfax County uh, um, ordinance in terms of trash uh, and uh, waste and trash recycling. Um, and the uh, so we got um, down here, we got some capital equipment and we got four merit and four uh, non-merit full-time employees in two service areas to start to implement trash removal and recycling from, from the parks on a comprehensive basis. Um, that sounds great until you realize that there are four service areas in the park system. So we're covering one third of those in the, in the, in the initial uh, request. So we've asked for that. Uh, and if we get that money, we could start, uh, we could uh, implement this program uh, across the county. 
The, the second thing is we, over time, uh, add, add new parks, uh, enhance facilities, uh, build new structures, and uh, some of those facilities are staffed or the structures need increased staff. So um, that has occurred over time. And for those new facilities, those new recent facilities, we need uh, the number of positions you see down here uh, in this uh, in this bullet right there. We are still working with uh, with uh, an equity consultant and with the Department of Management and Budget and the BOS to try to figure out how to um, uh, adjust our funding model to account for equity. And I would say there that there are that there are three things that the consultant has. Uh, uh, by the way, the HHS is Health and Human Services Committee. Uh, meeting of the uh, Board of Supervisors. There is not a Parks Committee at the uh, Board of Supervisors, so we have to uh, uh, find our way in through another, uh, 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 at the committee level through other means. The um, So uh, a number of proposals for equity. Uh, one would be to reduce the costs for programs that we offer based upon their public benefit. So a swimming program or a general benefit uh, uh, summer program, perhaps, if the cost could be reduced for that, if the cost that we need to recover could be reduced for that, um, that would be a way to uh, improve equity. Direct subsidies are another way. And the third way would be sliding fees, presumably based upon uh, income. Uh, so we are, you know, one of the meetings I mentioned for Wednesday night is a discussion about how the public outreach and community input that we're receiving uh, on those proposals, on those options is proceeding. So again, this is just a summary of the uh, uh, of the the, the two uh, finite and the one uh, undefined request that we have for the FY26 budget on, on top of uh, general fund budget on top of our base budget request. So revenue and operating fund, that's not one that we have to ask for the county's approval. We do that on our own. Uh, and, and this is uh, where we were FY24 actual. That is the end of, uh, of June 30th, 24. Uh, the 25, our approved current budget uh, and, the, uh, and the baseline we have uh, uh, are anticipating for FY26. You will notice the bottom line net revenue that's the amount of money that we have left over to put into that uh, um, uh, revenue improvement fund or capital improvement fund to, to uh, from our side to try to improve the, uh, uh, or maintain or, or capital improvements or, or renovations on the revenue producing facilities that we, uh, that we own. Um, and, uh, and, and it's not a lot of money. So, uh, uh, and uh uh, and, and some of that in the past has also been used, for example, for revenue stabilization fund, which is like a, a, a rainy day fund that should our revenue decline because of weather or people no longer would like to play golf or, uh, for example, every day that the water mine closed us because of a severe storm is a $60,000 loss in revenue. So they're, they're, these are, uh, uh, weather can have big, big impacts. The other thing I'd say about the revenue fund is that um, we used to have uh, fee adjustments in April, but uh, um, we uh, we sometimes. But let me back up. On the revenue side, uh, on the general fund side, the county pays for the personnel costs, including the benefits. On the revenue side, the county. Although, although the revenue employees are still county employees, the county does not pay for their salaries. So we have to cover the salaries and the benefits for all the employees covered by the revenue fund. So when the, the Board of Supervisors determines that they're going to give uh, um, uh, market adjustment or, or merit increases to the county employees, that hits us pretty hard. Uh, and we have to make those up through the only way we can through fee increases. So we used to do fee increases just effective April 1st, but we were leaving too much money on the table. So now we generally have our fee increases um, go into effect 
January 1st, and we may do a supplemental increase later in the fiscal year in the April, May timeframe, uh, depending upon what the Board of Supervisor, uh, what the Board of Supervisors do with the county uh, employee compensation and what we need to do to try to make ourselves whole. As I said, by law, we have to break even at least uh, in these situations. So these show some of the projections I won't go uh, that we estimate for this next fiscal year. I won't go into that. And opportunities for input. We are still, you know, public comment can still be sent to us anytime at the addresses here below. Uh, and we just talked about the fee increases and things. So let me go into the park bond. So the park bond is obviously spreading the costs of, uh, of our uh, facilities uh, over um, multiple fiscal years. Uh, and, and these are, uh, again, the various sources of the projects uh, of, of capital funding for our projects. I talked about these before, the bond, park bond itself, the, uh, um, uh, the general fund, the money we get from the county, our, uh, our, our own revenue, uh, net profit, and proffers that we, uh, we get. Proffers are, are obviously used for, uh, for new projects, for, for uh, land donations and, and, uh, and building new facilities. So in, in 2016, we did a needs assessment. Uh, uh, that is not this. I'll talk about that a, a little bit more later. But, but part of that was assets at or near the end of their useful life. This is a current number, not a 2016 number. And it shows that there is a, a, lot out of, out, a lot of things out there. There are a lot of things that need to be upgraded or replaced or renovated. Just look at playgrounds alone, $28 million of, of playgrounds. Just, just as an aside on playgrounds, so McLean Central Park has its uh, new, play, new uh, uh, facilities, uh, one of which is a combined Todd and older uh, uh, children playground uh, for which a group of, of um, people in McLean raised uh, over $400,000. Well, that's triggered a, uh, uh, a, a Me Too kind of uh, situation where uh, folks in at least two other communities in, in, in McLean now want to do the same thing, uh, which is great from a partnership standpoint. It's difficult for um, the, the park authority and for the county because of, um, a, a, if they're successful, it just means better facilities in uh, a non-vulnerable or opportunity area that we now have, you know, we're farther behind in terms of the rest of the county in terms of the facilities that they should have to be on an equal footing. Uh, and um, and so that 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 creates some uh, some difficulty uh, in that situation. The other thing is, we just don't have the the, the capital money uh, to to uh, address a lot of these situations because of the rec centers down here. They were all built around the same time, and they are for almost the foreseeable future creating tremendous demands upon our capital improvement funds and our cash flow. So this is the next, along those lines, this is the next bond cycle. Right now, the county is saying, your bond is going to be around $180 million. Just in this bucket alone, I mean, in the bag alone, you can see $205 million. And what you should do also is take, I think it's it's Providence Rec Center and take that 25 million and moving it, move it down to Audrey Moore because those costs have increased. So now we're not gonna be able to get a start on doing Providence in the next bond. Uh, that's gonna have to be pushed out. Um, it, it, you can see also that it, it really doesn't address, uh, um, it you know, deferred, capital replacements and renovations. Well, maybe that's 155 million of the 176, but that's for the next six years. And what happens to additional items uh, that then become beyond their useful life uh, or out of date in the, in, uh, beyond that. 
So, uh, and then, and that doesn't talk then about all the other 2026 needs that we're not addressing. I wouldn't even keep Riverbend. I wouldn't have Riverbend on that. That, that I think is probably a new visitor center. Uh, I don't think we can afford that. I don't think anybody wants it. It would probably require trees to be taken down. Uh, um, I just don't see that as a realistic item. Anyway, some of the other things uh, that are that are not shown on here. Clemmy Jontry is going to be in that. Uh, it, it was built in what, 93, 94, in the mid 90s. Uh, um, it's 20 years are coming up or are past. So uh, it, it's going to need several million dollars of renovations soon. Uh, a collections facility for our uh, uh, archaeology collections, uh, which we would love to do. Um, we don't, Sports Authority is mentioned there. Let me just mention that as an aside. There is a proposal to create a separate, to look at creating a separate sports authority. The BOS has asked for a, a study to be done and more information to be gathered. But if there is a sports authority, what would they cover? Uh, would they take, would they handle all the, all the fields or would it just be uh, something like the uh, Montgomery County soccer Metroplex up in, uh, up in Germantown. Uh, so, and and is, would they be completely privately funded or would that would that siphon some capital funds away from the park authority? So there are issues there that uh, uh, need to be addressed. Um, let's see here. So planning process. Uh, I, I don't have a lot of charts on this. We, we had the needs assessment. That was 2026, as I mentioned. You will see that the strategic plan, we're operating under one that is quote, expired or, or, or was only to cover through 23. But there is a new, a new needs assessment and a new uh, a strategic plan in the works, probably in the 25, 26 uh, uh, timeframe. I think we're going to want to have the, uh, maybe even have the 2020, uh, uh, have it done before the bond comes up in 2020. Uh, six so uh that could be a 25 project but it's the master plan which is really the uh, the umbrella plan under which the strategic plan exists and it's the master plan that really aligns um all the sub plans and let me just show you that uh so um really helps inform our 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 operations our our spending but this this really shows how the various plans align. So you see the master plan in the center. You see on the right, all the sub plans that we have to include within the master plan or adjust. Not Those are ours on the right and all the ones of the, of the board of supervisors in the county on the left. Um, and, uh, and then you can see here is the relationship of the various plans, our, our overall mission, our vision, um, here on the left, you can see the uh, uh, the Parks and Rec System Master Plan here, and then the Strategic Plan, and then I was talking about the uh, the various annual plans and work plans. Those are uh, those are here, and uh, and annual goals. Uh, the uh, okay, let me go back here. Uh, I talked about the quarterly report for the for uh, development. Let me mention um, one other thing. So, so Mastenbrook, uh, we were talking about Mastenbrook, and and how that uh, may be creating equity challenges for the park board. This was a request we 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 considered at our last board meeting on September twenty yeah. fifth. Uh, and sorry to interrupt. Uh, Could you explain what Mastenbrook is? For yes. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I told you, but I didn't tell everybody. So Mas our Mastenbrook grant program is the Park Authority has set sets aside money in each bond. Uh, this year, I think it was around, the uh, uh, last bond cycle, I think it was around 800000 to give up to $20,000 per year to an organization to fund um, up to half the cost of a project. Uh, and, uh, and so, and one can get a new Mastenbrook project every, a new Mastenbrook grant every fiscal year. The, um, 
this project is, you can see the black lines here on the two fields here and here and around this one, was to put some uh, fencing around the field so balls wouldn't roll off into the woods or across the road, even more concerning. The difficulty is while the project project was only $60,000, $60, uh, it did it did not. We are now looking at PROSA and equity with respect to each Mass and Brook grant. It didn't check any of the PROSA boxes uh, in terms of access uh, or enhancing the park experience or enriching connectivity, connectivity and, and, uh, in terms of environmental corridors. Uh, as such, um, there were some board members who said, look, it, me it meets our current um, Massenbrook conditions and terms, but perhaps we ought to look at revising those terms. Because what it does is it enhances a facility in a non-vulnerability non area. And so it puts us farther behind in a vulnerability area or an equity area. Um, we had looked at and uh, we had revised slightly the Massenbrook grants last year at this time because in the context of the grant for the um, the team that raised the money for the McLean Central Park Playground, that was a $400,000 project. And we gave them $20,000 under our then Massenbrook terms. Well, the feeling was from an equity standpoint, a, an organization that had that much financial capability and leverage probably didn't need that $20,000 from us. We could have used that $20,000 uh, in a more um, uh, appropriate uh, uh, location. And so we we changed the terms to say, we would cut off master group projects at $100,000. If your project was greater than $100,000 and you were able to fund it, Presumably, you don't need our money, and so you wouldn't qualify for a grant. But now, this is this this latest uh, 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 grant request, which we did approve, by the way, um, raised additional concerns and said maybe we should have outright grants um, that are equal to or offsetting of the grants we give to organizations such like, or organization to grants such like, uh, such as this, which do not um, satisfy any PROSA uh, objectives. Uh, we are gonna probably take a look at that. Staff has been directed to, to take a look at that. I think what we may do is give outright grants because th the other difficulty is that the Mastenbrook program only works if you have an organization which can come up with the other half of the funding. And, and clearly, um, uh, you know, by uh, observation, one can see that in opportunity areas, that's not often the case. So we need to come up some other way to do an offset so we don't fall further behind. So that's the Massenbrook. That's an overall quick picture of, uh, of, um, uh, of where we are in the, uh, um, uh, the park authority and our status. Uh, and uh, we covered all those 50 plus charts in, in about uh, 40 minutes. So I, I went fast, but uh, happy to take any questions. Thank you, Tim. Like Karen has her hand up. Hi, Tim. Hi there. Karen Washburn. Um, I have a question uh, regarding park fees. All the other parks in our neck of the woods here that are owned uh, the national park system, actually the big one, they all charge fees. When Riverbend first came into the uh, county park system, that was back in the day when we had license tags that showed that we paid taxes in Fairfax County. Right. Uh, at the time, they had a person manning the guard booth. If you lived in Fairfax County, admission was free. If you did not live in Fairfax County, you had to pay a fee. Now, that was abandoned because they felt that they didn't collect enough money to pay the person to stand in the booth. But today, we're, that was 40 years ago. We're now in the electronic era. 
Riverbend Park's parking lot is frequently full of cars with out-of-state license plates. <laughs> is there some reason that we couldn't have an electronic situation that you can have a park card if you pay your taxes in Fairfax County, but if you're in Pennsylvania and you want to come and see our beautiful park, you got to pay. That that's a that's a good question, Karen. Uh, and uh, and I, I think also the Virginia State Parks, where you where you buy an annual uh, uh, park pass to display on your uh, uh, on your uh, vehicle mirror. Uh, I mean, we, not- we we actually uh, that actually uh, is a, is a question that has come up during my tenure. I've been on the park board since 2016, and it came up I think shortly after that, within a year or two after I had joined joined the board. Uh, and the feeling at the t- at the time was that we did not want to um, restrict access to the parks and make it more difficult for uh, anybody, resident or non-resident, to uh, to to use the parks. And so it was really a decision um, uh, from the board of supervisors, uh, not formally but informally, that they didn't want to get, want us to go down that route. Well, I think that it should be revisited because obviously money is required here Mm -hmm. and the fees are not astronomical. They're not prohibitive. And yet uh, it keeps the national park going uh, (laughs) to do very well. And I think that it should be something that's revisited. As you know, I have been deeply involved for the last 13 years with supporting the equestrian facilities at River at Absolutely. Farm. And again, we are now getting our electronic gate in there, but we have attracted a good many people because of our horse shows that love to use our cross country course. The reason being it's free. <laughs> um, and to use any other course of that type in the general metropolitan area or beyond metropolitan area, people are paying fees of $75 a go to take their horse and ride that course. So what would be unreasonable about having a charge card slip in at the gate and saying you can either buy your Fairfax County card for $20 a year, or you can have a $5 one-time use. I mean, it's money. It, it, it's it, in any event, it is a good suggestion and I will pass it pass it along and make sure it is uh, you know, uh, on the table. Thank you. Meg, you had your hand up? Yes, I do. Thank you. Um, you had a slide up about potential places to save money um, in the upcoming fiscal year if you're required to reduce expenditures by 10%. Yes. And one yes. of the notations on there was closing the Scotts Run parking lot for a savings of like $156,000 or something like that. Right. Considering you just got done renovating that parking lot, what is it that would say, you know, you're not doing more renovations. So what would save $150,000 by closing a parking lot? Uh, we, because of the amount of traffic there, uh, we, we actually have to monitor the lots and put up signs when they are full. Uh, and so right. that requires both staff time and um, to the extent that they are available, um, uh, police time. that we. So the for. park authority pays for the police officer who helps with the traffic? Yes. Oh, okay. I got it. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Henry. Hi, Tim. Thanks so much. This is a great presentation. I've learned quite sure. a bit. Um, and one theme is that um, despite significant growth, population growth in and around Fairfax County, um, given the financial constraints and the complexity of running the Fairfax County Park System, it doesn't leave mer- very much room or money to think about how you can expand the park authority services commensurate with the increase in in population, um, right. especially in the long term. I'm curious how the park authority thinks about that problem, especially when um, 
uh, especially part of your mandate is to um, I can't remember the the exact words, but to um, provide uh, open space. But as open space in Fairfax County diminishes, it becomes more and more difficult to accomplish your mission and more expensive to do so. You're you're absolutely right. The uh, 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 I, in the um, in the budget, the straw man. Um, uh, amount of the uh, next park bond. I think the figure for land acquisition was 10, 10 million. Uh, obviously in, in Great Falls, that doesn't go very far. And countywide, it's spread very thin. Uh, and in terms of new facilities, uh, there, you know, there may be, I think in that chart, it may have said 18 million. I'm not sure it would be 18 million that's going to be available. It might be less. Uh, again, you know, uh, nine man, nine magisterial districts, um, uh, six years. Uh, you know that that those funds are not going to be uh, very much indeed for uh, um, for increasing you know, maybe one or two new parks countywide in the next six year uh, six year period. So the answer is is that is a challenge. We really don't have any uh, good answers to that uh, right now. Uh, partnerships would be would be great, um, but uh, or uh, or donations of 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 land. Uh, the the difficulty also to some degree with donations though is that's that that's more area that we have to keep up. By the way, if we get a donation with a house on it, or unless it's a historic house, um, we will probably demolish that house. Uh, if it's a historic house, then it would potentially go into our. Um, historic uh, resident uh, historic properties uh, inventory uh, resident curator program. We have limited funds. We can only uh, 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 roll out so many uh, resident curator uh, uh, properties uh, requesting applications uh, uh, per year, and um, and in the meantime, we have to maintain those properties. So even getting historical properties is potentially uh, uh, concerning for for us. But the answer is. Uh, the, 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 the CIP discussions, the capital improvement program, the size of the bond, the issues you raised, equity-based, non-equity-based, uh, the, 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 you know, Jay has, you know, these kind of discussions, uh, not only with, uh, with Jimmy Beerman and Drainsville, but with all the supervisors in terms of, you know, uh, citizens ask the supervisors for uh, amenities and she only has so much money to go around. So it, it is an issue of, uh, of ongoing discussions. Let me just put it that way. Gary, may have a follow-up question or comment? Oh, I do. I have another subject here. Uh, okay. Tim, back in the uh, late 70s and early 80s, it probably carried on through the 80s, I don't know about the rest of the county, but I would assume it happened there also. In Great Falls, there were, in McLean, there were parcels of land being developed. And it was, they had pieces that didn't fit into a lot. And for some reason, the developers of the land decided <laughs> the odd quarter acre, eighth acre, or whatever, should be donated to the park authority which I'm sure you're familiar with quite a few of these. Right. And the, again, there's the maintenance issue. Uh, is it possible to contemplate deaccessioning these? I mean, we have people that have a, a piece of land next to them that they think is part of their yard. Uh, I do sell real estate for a living. So <laughs> I know, right. Yes. Look at this stuff. They think it's part of their yard. They always get a big shock if anybody ever does a survey that, no, it's not part of your yard. You don't own that. Well, what if they did want to own it? Could it be deaccessioned? Could money be raised through selling that to them so long as it did not interfere with the zoning? Uh, that's a good question. I, uh, I, I believe uh, that it has been mentioned um, uh, about the possibility of... of uh, Deaccessing uh, some uh, um, uh, some uh, areas, some some parcels. 
I haven't heard it discussed uh, recently. I heard it discussed two years ago uh, in a context uh, that I might not support because I, yeah, but, uh, um, but I understand what you're, what you're saying. Uh, and I'll certainly be happy to, uh, uh, to, to raise that, that, that issue as well. I will say that with respect to those sort of orphan uh, parcels, orphan park parcels, uh, the, the natural areas of the park system, about 70% of, uh, uh, of our stream valley property, et cetera, is, is, uh, you know, is really not maintained. We don't actively mow or, uh, uh, or do anything, uh, anything to them. So it doesn't require a maintenance activity. There is enough other park uh, uh, property that does. So uh, we have to do, use it there, but it's, 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 it's an out of the box uh, idea. Uh, and again, happy to, to raise it. So Henry was next and then I have a question for you, Tim. Okay, Henry, please. Thanks. Um, I just, I mean, I'm sure many, and possibly you, Tim, can relate to the the demoralizing feeling of reading about how in Fairfax County, you know, the board approves, you know, ever increasing commercial density for more development, <laughs> which benefits the coffers of real estate developers. Um, and our park system is overutilized and Great Falls Park is overutilized and you have to pay for police officers to manage the traffic patterns. Um, is there anything that we as private citizens and members of the GFCA can do to change the reality of the situation to ensure that more money is directed towards um, managing, protecting outdoor space, which is badly needed by the uh, the residents of Fairfax County. Um, I feel as though writing, you know, a letter writing campaign possibly wouldn't necessarily be helpful. Um, and so I'm at a loss for what I can do to be constructive in um, uh, in helping the park authority provide carry out its mission, really. Sure. The uh, well, I think uh, my impression from uh well, let me just say that Kyle Stone, our chairman, uh, wrote about two weeks ago to each of the supervisors, wrote a letter to each of the supervisors about two weeks ago, uh, focusing on on maintenance and our deferred maintenance and the fact that we were with their with the help of the board of supervisors, uh, you know, starting to make a comeback, trying to make a dent in in the deferred maintenance, and we appreciated their support. Uh, I, you know, uh, from my perspective. That's that's his focus. That's our focus beyond the equity issue, beyond the the two requests that I uh, specifically identified. Uh, in terms of areas where uh, the budget might be tweaked or might be uh, adjusted this year, you you're 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 right. I mean, we had an opportunity um, uh, two years ago, probably to uh, uh, maybe pick up. Uh, uh, five acres adjacent to uh, to River Bend Park, uh, nicely wooded area. But um, uh, you know, when you when you have, I, I think uh, uh, eight eight million dollars left in your overall land acquisition budget for the cycle till twenty twenty six, and and it would just add to the park. Really, wouldn't provide any additional access or amenities or. Or our facilities um, or fields uh, that you know that just wasn't uh, or address equity areas to to boot that that just wasn't realistic. So the answer is we uh, uh, unfortunately had to pass on the uh, on the opportunity. So so the answer is um, deferred maintenance is the one area where I think that there and and I'll know a little bit more on Wednesday because there is an advocacy group uh, meeting. Uh, with Jimmy Beerman to discuss their view of our budget, uh, and I'll be anxious to see what they have hear what they have to say. So, Lisa, you had a question. Yeah, I was just wondering because um, I know I've signed up for some events at Colvin Run and Riverbend that ended up being canceled because of low attendance, low signups. Do you see any risk of some of our 
sites in Great Falls, the Drainsville district, being kind of on that list of sites that could potentially close because there's lower attendance right now? Uh, I, I would have to say that there are, um, um, there are probably no sites off the list today. Uh, and um, uh, I, I think, uh, you know, if there are proposals to shut them down, and I think there were proposals in the past specifically to close Riverbend Park, and uh, um, you know, uh, you know, we 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 the park authority put that on the table years ago. I forget when it when it was. Maybe uh, in the in the downturn in 20, 2008, 2009. Uh, and and the board of supervisors said, "Well, okay, let we'll, we'll accept that. Let's let's close it." And then the public just rose up and said. This is crazy. It's a gorgeous. It's a gorgeous park. A beautiful location. We use it. The summer camps are there. The Native American fest, et cetera, et cetera. And and you know the board of supervisors back to uh, back down uh, uh, from that situation. I would imagine the same situation would come up. Whatever, uh, if, if that was the approach that the Department of Management and Budget took, or the county executive took in the advertised budget to recommend that, that a park authority nature uh, uh, center and, or historic site be closed, that would probably create a huge upcry, um, not only in the district in which that was located, but probably across the, uh, across the county. So, uh, you know, it, it's like you may have noticed the cross out on the summer concert series there in terms of places that we would look to take reductions. Uh, I think the feeling was uh, just, speaking frankly, that we felt that that was probably a, a poke in the eye of the supervisors. Those uh, uh, summer concert series are uh, very much enjoyed by by the district populaces, populace and, uh, and residents, and uh, uh, the uh, the supervisors uh, like them and enjoy them. And, um, and, and so we said, we're just, we're, we're not going to offer that. We're not going to look to that for, for cuts. So I, I, I think it's a give and take. Um, I think if if there was the uh, uh, suggestion that that was going to happen, you know, there still would be discussions that wouldn't, you know, it's not, well, you don't have a say once we decide that that's money we're going to take, we could potentially come up with the, the 644,000 in savings elsewhere. Uh, and so I wouldn't think that that's a done deal. But the answer is, who knows? We're hoping it doesn't happen, uh, but I don't think anything is... Uh, uh, is necessarily off the table at this point in time either. Thank you, Tim. Um, so we'll go to Meg, then Henry, and then it's almost eight o'clock. So I want to respect people's time if they want to have other things to do this evening. Uh, yes, Meg. Yes, thank you. Um, when you talk about closing a park, does that mean selling that property? No, no. It would still remain park property, uh, but unfortunately, those are staffed parks, so part of the uh, um, uh, part of the savings there is the fact that you would no longer have to staff the parks, uh, and that's where you would actually get your, uh, your savings. Not so just you're, operations. You're, you're just looking for savings. You're not looking to raise revenue. No. Okay. No, we are no. no we are looking for 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 cuts. <laughs> These are cuts to the money that we would be paid or we would be given by the county. Okay, thank you. You know, you had me freaked out about selling and there for a minute. Henry, I think you were next. A quick question for you: um, Are there, uh, having spent over ten years, well, about ten years in uh, Palo Alto, where right. every corner you turn, there's a park? Um, I'm wondering if you, if you might know, are there localities or counties that seem to be doing park authority work properly that meets? the needs of the population that we uh, could we, emulate we 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 do and when we have reviews with the board of supervisors we show them these for example on the on the maintenance we we did an analysis last year which compared a benchmark marked um fairfax county i think with uh um mecklenburg county uh charlotte north carolina county uh uh and uh, also the uh, the dmv count, local counties uh, and showed how much we were spending in Fairfax on a per acre basis versus the other counties. So we do benchmarking of that of that ilk uh, along the lines you suggest. The other thing is, um, in terms of 
of the plans, the strategic plans, the uh, uh, and our uh, uh, on the first chart there was a Capra uh, 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 logo. It's a Committee for Accreditation of Parks and Recs, um, and uh, so we do every five years. We are accredited by the National Association or the Accrediting Association. That takes up an awful lot of time and exp and staff time and to some degree expense to do that. But it also helps us uh, assure that we are um, that we are using best practices and we are maintaining the very highest standards of parks and recs uh, uh, procedures and processes. Um, typically, uh, the last three cycles, at least, we have met all of the national standards when we go through those accreditation. This past cycle was 154 national standards, and we, we met every one of them. So uh, uh, I think that says something for how well run and how efficient your uh, uh, Fairfax County Park Authority, uh, Authority is. But um, And so, yes, we, we, we do do that. Uh, Elizabeth, I think you're uh, uh, next. Thank you. Um, can you hear me? Oops. I can. Yes, thank you. Okay, good. Um, I, I'm wondering why the county is telling you you have to cut in 26. I mean, they have raised our taxes tremendously. And they have, you know, if you get a new car or anything like that, they collect a lot there, too. And um, I, I'm sort of in a quandary because I know they're putting a lot into the schools. And one of the things that disturbed me was that most of it went to administration and not the raises and not to teacher salaries. And I know that happens in a lot of the various um organizations within the county. Um, it goes more to administration rather than to the workers. Um, so I'm wondering, and I know that Riverbend only has three employees um, and sometimes they don't stay long enough. I think, anyway. they, have, I think they have a larger staff than that, but, uh, um, but anyway, yeah, you uh, you're right. Fairfax County has a, has a very, very large budget. A very big percentage goes to schools. And uh, and uh, once uh, uh, the money goes to schools, <laughs> the, the, the county doesn't have much, much uh, say in what happens uh, to it. But uh, um, uh, I, I think it's it's, you know, that the the revenues um, post uh, post COVID have suffered because uh the 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 commercial real estate market has uh has um not been as robust as it had been in the past with more and more workers working working remotely uh i don't know what the state sales tax income is that uh and local therefore piggyback tax that uh, fairfax county gets as a result uh i have heard you know um uh uh, anecdotally, that that this is going to be a difficult uh, um, uh, budget year. The Park Authority was not the only one to get the, that ten percent reduction um, re request, ten percent reduction request. All of the county uh, um, departments uh, were asked to uh, to do that. I'm including uh, presumably the, uh, uh, the the schools. Um, uh, whether they respond or not, I can't tell you. But uh, but yes, but we certainly uh, um, try to uh, um, listen to and 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 respond to the requests that are made from across the street. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Meg. Yes, thank you. One last question. Uh, before we lived here, we were living out in Utah, and we were having a problem in Salt Lake County with homeless people taking up residence at the local parks, you know, right. access to bathrooms and public land where it was a little bit easier to you know, pitch a tent or live, you know, than on private property or anything. And I was wondering if the park authority was having such a similar problem. We do. We, we do from time to time have those problems. We, uh, we uh, actively engage our, uh, uh, our, um, 
mental health and health and human services uh, counterparts and neighborhood and community services, uh, police department, all, uh, all of the above to try to uh, uh, address those oh, yeah, uh, yeah. The, the situation. So the answer is yes. Uh, we we uh, and we try to be proactive with respect to uh, uh, as as you know when somebody makes us aware of things we uh, we get right on it. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Thank you so much, Tim, for for sharing. This is very informative um, and great discussion. Uh, I just have a couple of quick announcements for everybody um, that Winnie sent over. She really wanted to be here, but she's she's mm -hmm. on vacation. Um, one, it's exciting. It's the first um, tree celebration event for the Drainsville District. Awesome. Uh, Supervisor Beerman's office is sponsoring this event all about trees. It's about the value and um, protection of trees in our community. It's going to be on October 20th at Lewinsville Park, which is in McLean, and it will be, so that's a Sunday, it will be from 3 to 6 p.m. Um, and it's... I, I, I did, I, somebody I think said recently, just Lisa, quickly, I, I thought someone said four to six that it was a two hour event. So we might just double, you are correct about that. No, the day. I think you're like, right. The flyer says four to six, the email was three okay. to six. So four okay. to six, we will send all the details to the week of, so you, yeah, you show up at the right, everyone shows at the right time. It's four to six at the Winsville Park. Um, there's going to be uh, activities for all ages, um, nature walk, face painting, local arborists, tree plantings and or urban forestry resources, so. It should be fun. Um, Winnie is part of the planning committee to, to put this together. Um, I plan to attend with, with my family. Um, and so that's one. And then Winnie also asked me to remind you that the ornaments are for sale. They're $20 each. They feature an original watercolor of the old schoolhouse by a local artist. And you can now purchase them at four locations in Great Falls. The um, Great Dog Store, the Great Falls Creamery, BRX, American Bistro, and the Wine Outlet at Colvin Run. So very exciting. And we'll also send information about that over email as well. Um, and then our November speaker will be from Riverbend Park. They're going to talk about, um, they'll be from the Resource Management Department and talk about how the park is managing invasives and other projects that they're doing there. So we'll look forward to, to meeting again uh, in November. Thank you again, Tim. Thank you, everyone. You're welcome. Have a great Appreciate night. it. Thanks, Thank everybody. You, Tim. Thank Bye. you, Lisa. You're welcome. Thanks, Bye, everybody.